Uh, hello, yes. Uh, hello, I'm Miles Jupp. I'm a sort of cross between um, Tom Service and Jenny Murray. Um, <laughs> essentially, I think that's fair to say. Uh, I've got a delightful uh, mentee. Uh, we've had some quite difficult sessions, because at my insistence, we've uh, had all of our sort of sessions at uh, a branch of Spearmint Rhinos. Um, <laughs> we've recently introduced a loyalty scheme. I don't know if you're aware of this. Um, <laughs> But uh, he's, he's, I've met, as I say, I've met him two or three times, and he seems perfectly nice. Please welcome Sean Keaveney from Six Music. Is this thing on? Has anybody else? Does anybody else do this? I've got to ask a quick question. I've got the audience. When you're drinking orange juice with bits, right? We've all done it. Anybody not done it? Freak. <laughs> You know, you're drinking orange juice with bits. Do you ever suck it through your teeth and pretend you're a plankton collecting spermware? <laughs> yeah. It's not just me, is it? Brilliant. If you haven't, you do it. It's a, it's a lot of fun. But um, it was Valentine's Day recently, of course, and uh, I wanted to treat me and my wife. I wanted to take us somewhere nice, you know, for a city break. And I was looking around and I thought, I'll tell you where we've not tried before, Belfast. They've had their troubles, and Lord knows we've had ours. <laughs> so uh, I was looking up, looking at it on the website, and one thing I didn't know about uh, Belfast is that the city airport is called, you're probably ahead of me here, the George Best International Airport. And I thought, that's a funny choice of icon for an international airport, isn't it, George Best? You know, I mean, obviously, a mercurial genius on the pitch... No question about that. One of the greatest, if not arguably the greatest football player of all time. But we all know his life was blighted by alcoholism, you know. So I thought it's a strange choice for an icon for an airport. And then I thought, hang on. Where else but an international airport can you order a pint of Stella and a double whiskey chaser at seven o'clock in the morning? It seemed completely normal. <laughs> but I see what they're trying to do, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bringing it together like that. Um, and, I mean, Lord knows you need a break, don't you? My wife and I, we've got two young kids. Anybody here got kids? Yes. There's a lot more people. It's cat, it's cat actually haven't got the strength to put their hands up. No. <laughs> 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 it's, it's a hard road. I mean, but, you know, I love kids so much, you know. You just want to hug them all the time, don't you? They're so... <laughs> And I'm shoulder to shoulder with Whitney on this one. You know, I believe the children are our future as well. But you've got to... You've got to keep your eye out at all times for malevolent influences on children. And when you get to have kids, you, that's what you do. You're always looking for it. I'm not talking about paedophiles and knife-wielding gun crime gangs. This is not a Daily Mail editorial meeting, OK? I'm talking about the weirdest places that you find malevolent influence. When I was a kid, right, when I was a kid, there was a programme on television that all us kids watched. Happy days. Sunday, Monday, happy days. Tuesday, Wednesday, happy days. Exactly. Do you remember it? <laughs> the biggest show in the world for kids, right? And I, I can hear you say, what, well, what better example to the young prepubescent children of the United Kingdom than young Bobby Soxers sucking down milkshakes to the sound of nascent rock and roll? What could be finer than that? You're wrong. It's filth. It is absolutely disgusting. Who was the main protagonist? Who was the hero of Happy Days? Oh, That's oh, right, oh, the Fonz. Not himself a teenager, but a 33-year-old man who lived in a garage, had a clear Oedipus complex, and what was his catchphrase? Hey. Not that one, the other one, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, he did say E hey, a lot, didn't he? <laughs> but he also said, do you remember the other one that he had? <laughs> Sit on it. <laughs> Sit on it? Sit on what? Sling your own back to the United States with that kind of filth. And it's everywhere. I'm telling you, once you've got kids, you've got to watch yourselves at Christmas. What, what more benign festival of loveliness is Christmas? Lovely Christmas songs. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. What more lovely thing can that be for a child? You're wrong again. <laughs> Extremely malevolent and terrifying for children. If you look at the verses, take the lyrics and read them, instead of singing them, saying a Bob Hoskins from the Long Grub Friday voice. <laughs> You get. You better watch out. <laughs> you better not cry. <laughs> you better not pout. And I'm telling you why. <laughs> Santa Claus 
is coming to town. He's making a list. He's checking it twice. He's gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town, ladies and gentlemen. He's horrifying. And, you know, I'm picking it further. Who popularised that in the 60s with his band, The Crystals? Phil Spector. I rest my case. Must we throw this filth and violence at our children? I don't think so. My name's been Sean Keenan from Six Music. Thank you very much. <laughs>